Sounds like something out of the Matrix, a giant world-spanning electronic network where high-powered machines battle it out for profits in a high-stakes game of cat and mouse that yields some $21 billion a year for the winners and can spell ruin for the losers. But it's not the matrix, it's the stock and commodities market. And the fact that these markets mainly consist now of computers trading against one another has been brought closer to the public's attention by last month's alleged theft of Goldman Sachs's proprietary trading code. Joining us now to dig deeper into this story is Bloomberg's Ben Fox, along with Adam Sussman, director of research at TAB Group, a New York-based advisor to financial service companies. Pim? Thanks very much, Mark. You know, we only show The Matrix, Mark, because we know that's your favorite movie, and we know <laughs> that you've been following what goes on there. But what's even more interesting is this battle between computer systems. Adam Sussman uh, coming to us from Tab Group. You've been keeping tabs on the system. Exactly what is high-frequency trading? You know, Pim, a lot of the high-frequency traders are looking for short-term imbalances in the supply and demand of liquidity in a certain stock. So when they see the stock price go outside of a particular range, they see that maybe there's a big buyer or seller in that stock, and they provide the liquidity into the marketplace, and then, you know, when the time is right, exit that position at a profit. All right. Now, there are different types of high-frequency trading, right? I mean, one of them is called iceberging. What's sure. iceberging? Sure. Well, the iceberging comes in when you've got a large institutional player, like a mutual fund, let's say, that's trying to, you know, get take off a large position or put on a large position. And so they want to try to hide their intention. And so over the course of a day or even two or three days, they'll kind of dribble out their, their order into the marketplace. And what the high-frequency traders are trying to do is pick up on that, you know, that supply-demand imbalance and say, hey, we know that there's this large player out there that wants to buy or sell a big amount. Let's try to you know, supply that liquidity and, and make some money on it. Okay, so you've got super fast computers, powerful computers, a lot of computer geeks writing uh, algorithms to try to take advantage of these market imbalances. What's the problem? Why is it in the, uh, why is it in the headlines? Why the focus? Well, I think that it's gotten a lot of press over the last couple of days, you know, A, because of the case that, that you know, we mentioned earlier about Goldman Sachs and the proprietary code that was, uh, that was allegedly stolen. Um, but I also think that, you know, the large institutional players have always had, you know, their gripes against the folks that made money to provide liquidity. Right, so they were never really quite friendly to the specialists. They weren't friendly towards the market makers. And now that those groups have kind of given ground to the high-frequency crowd, you know, they're taking their shots at them, too. What kind of percentage, for example, daily trading volume is devoted to high-frequency trading? You know, there's, there's a range of estimates. I mean, we think they're involved in a substantial portion of the actual trades that are out there, up to, up to three-quarters of the number of trades out there. Now, if you're looking at volume, it's probably a little bit less uh, because what the high-frequency guys are doing is they're putting little orders out there, right, to try to figure out where that supply-demand imbalance is. So they're involved in a lot of the trades, but probably a smaller percentage of the actual share volume. What does it take to become a high-frequency trader? I mean, do you need a sponsoring broker? I mean, do you need a lot of capital? Well, you know, when you're, when you're smaller and you're starting out, uh, yeah, I mean, you definitely need a sponsored access broker in order to get to the marketplace at a very low cost. I mean, a lot of these strategies are extremely price sensitive. Uh, so you need sponsored access into the markets, and you also need, you know, some code and some, uh, you know, special sauce, so to speak, that is able to analyze market data in a very, you know, quick manner in order to execute on that uh, before anybody else. So in a lot of cases, it's time to market. Last question. What about regulators? Has technology outpaced regulation? Are we going to get regulation of high-frequency trading? Um, well, we'll see. I mean, I know that uh, Senator Schumer has been, you know, he's actually called our firm uh, to talk about these issues. I think he's more interested in what the exchanges are actually doing in terms of making sure that everybody has equal access to information. And I think the high-frequency firms, you know, you know, they do have open and, and fair access. So I don't think they're taking advantage advantage of anything um, unfairly. All right. I want to thank you very much, Adam Sussman, coming to us from the TAB Group. Mark Crumpton, back to you. I know you're a Matrix fan, Mark. Actually, I'm sorry. My favorite movie is The Shawshank Redemption, since you mentioned it. <laughs>